Garcelle Beauvais of the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, welcome to the Variety After Show. Thank you. I'm so excited <laughs> to be here. We're excited to have you. By the way, mm -hmm. first Black housewife of the yep. Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. What in the world took Andy Cohen so long? You know, I don't know. I, I guess they never thought of it until they thought of it, right? Well, you all like, exist. Time, you, no you, fake tan here. I'm all black. I love it. And all real. You keep it 100, I think. Uh, more. Yeah. yeah. No, no. There, I, I love that. That's what we love about you. Let's talk about this episode because it was like I had said before uh, while we were teeing up. Uh, it was so highly anticipated because you all have been away from the air. We have all missed you. Thank we have you. missed the drama. Yeah. This episode did not disappoint. So let's talk about where it started, which was Kyle's uh, bar barbecue. barbecue. Yeah. yeah. Where Denise... Nobody was grilling, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> there was no grill to be had. Not a barbecue in sight. Not a barbecue in sight. <laughs> it was more like a like a like a taco bar. I right, guess. exactly. Yeah, exactly. which no, was right. yummy. My kids loved it. I mean, it looked it looked amazing. It was. It ended dramatically. Of course, Denise, uh, you know, leaving the party early. What was it really like, though? Like, how did it really go down? You know what really happened? I think you know Denise was just tired of the girls you know, harping on this whole thing about, you know, being real, let's talk about it, about, you know, us talking about a threesome around her kids, and I get that. Uh, but I think she was just tired of them, you know, constantly bringing it up. And then Aaron felt like he was being chivalrous and uh, said a little too much, I think, in terms of the other women didn't like that he spoke up. And, uh, and then it continued. She didn't want to be there. She didn't want to deal with it. But the thing was really interesting to me is that she didn't want to deal with it. And then she's like, we're going to go have steak and go to a strip club. <laughs> like, that was a little odd. Do you think she was being serious? Do you think she was yeah. being serious? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she got a happy ending. I think she did. I mean, she got him a happy ending, not her. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I feel like this was a pretty juicy episode, but it's going to get even juicier from here. Did you feel like the women were piling on her a little bit? Oh, absolutely. And I voiced that. Absolutely. Especially when we went to Rome. I mean, when we went to Rome, it just like all bets were off. Everybody was coming after her. She was crying at every dinner. And uh, it was a Ooh. lot. It was a lot. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. At any point were you like, what did I sign up for? Because these... Oh, yeah. I feel like I aged about a year at, when we were in Rome. <laughs> How many, the, that? How many days was that? How many days was that trip? I'm like, oh my God, I feel like I aged. <laughs> Why? Well, a lot. Okay. New fights, new alliances. Yeah, no, really. New... It's at the constant Denise, but then it was Denise versus Brandy. And all the women took Brandy's, you know, side, which I thought was really interesting because it's like your friend is Denise. At least, you know, wait till you know what's really happening before you took sides. But they took sides right out of the gate. Wow. Yeah. Which, were you fam you were familiar with the show beforehand, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I mean, I would watch it here in the Beverly Hills and Atlanta were my favorites. Okay. And every now and then I'd tune into New York to see what Bethany was up to. <laughs> <laughs> Have you tuned in this season? No, that, I haven't yet. It's no. wild. I just Is caught it? up over. Oh yeah, it's it's, oh, okay. it's very it's uh it's very. I love how all the the housewives franchises are very different from each other. They are, and I can really appreciate that. So yeah, they are, and I can appreciate it too. I never would have made it on Orange County or Atlanta. <laughs> Why wouldn't you have made eat, it on Atlanta? They have, listen, they would have eaten me alive on Atlanta. <laughs> really? Yeah, you see those women? I have. I think they're hilarious. They are funny. I, but but they're, you, they're cutthroat. you have to bring your A game for yeah. sure, for yeah. sure. Yeah. So with this, so with this episode two, uh, we really saw what happens when the men get all up in the mix. Uh, Aaron, do you think Aaron? Do you think the husband should just kind of sit back? Yeah, I do to a certain extent. I mean, I get it; it's chivalrous. You want to protect your woman, but at the same time, you know these women; it's their dynamics, and that's what makes the show. So I think it's okay if he were to tell Denise on on their own how he felt, but then to come in time after time, and Erica obviously didn't go for it, and it just made it just made it a little bit the dynamics that much different. Right, right. Yeah. Do we know what Aaron does? 
girl. We're still trying to figure that I, out. I'm asking that in earnest because I actually, I did some research. So he actually does run a holistic center. Yeah, right? he does. Okay. He does. And he's really, I mean, supposedly he's really good at what he does. I just don't understand it when he's talking about it. Got it. Would you ever try? I mean, if it were safe, you know, post COVID and everything. I that's... would. I okay. Would. I believe he knows what he's doing, but I think it's the relaying to us of what he's doing that we lose something. Probably. Maybe it's one of those things you have to experience. I think so. Yeah. And when he said at the dinner, he goes, you know, we all have a little cancer in us. And I was like, I'd like to think not. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> I'd like, no. If we're being optimistic. I'm not claiming that. Right. Right. Um, it's it's <laughs> please circle back with us after you uh after you go in i would love i would really like an yeah, update I yeah <laughs> variety can follow me in <laughs> i would love that yes <laughs> we'll send cameras exactly six feet apart obviously uh, obviously um your relationship with kyle where is that right now because you all have gotten off to a rocky start yeah nowhere least. we haven't spoken <laughs> Um, I suppose we'll speak, you know, we'll obviously speak at the reunion next week is when we film it, oh, but we haven't spoken okay. at all. And, you know, I'm new to this thing. So, you know, I would hope I'd get a little bit more grace, but, uh, I haven't, but that's okay. I'm a big girl. I can take it. What do you think it is that's not clicking with her? You know, I just don't think that everybody's supposed to be best friends. I think that's not real life, you know? And I think when we met, she was nice to me. I can't say she wasn't nice to me. She was nice to me, but I just felt like when it was important and I was like, tell me how you feel. And did I do something to, you know, she called us all fake ass bitches. And I said, really, what did I do? And she's like, no, I don't want to single you out. And then I go, no, no, tell me. And she goes, no, I don't want to single you out. And I was like, huh, okay. <laughs> and that was her voice too, by the way. Okay. <laughs> I, it, yes, I, I. Can you do impressions of all the of all your no. classmates? No, right now. Jennifer. Okay. <laughs> Give me time. I'm well here. then, well then, do you feel you have made genuine friends on this cast? I have, I have. I mean, okay. obviously, I've been friends with Denise for a number of years, and Rina as well. Uh, but Eric, I feel like we have a great friendship, and I really like Dorit too. So. The, yeah. yeah, so it is real. There is an element that is yeah. that is real. Yeah. Would you say you're as close to some of them as you are your other girlfriends, the ones that we saw in previous episodes? No, not yet. I think okay. that takes time. I yeah. think that takes time, I think. But I really like Eric. I feel like like we're the same in terms of we say it how we see it. We you know, we're bold and not afraid to, to say how we feel. This episode also included a really poignant revelation about your relationship or non-relationship with your father yeah I've never talked about my father that was really I feel like I reveal so much this, this season I have nothing next season if I come back <laughs> <laughs> I think Indeed. the cops are trying to find me no <laughs> Oh, so that's like a private plane or something coming to get you. Yeah. Well, no. right. <laughs> well um, revealing, did you, so you, you didn't think you were going to reveal that on the, as part of the show? Yeah, I didn't, I never really talked about my dad. That was something that I really never really talked about in the press or anything like that. So when that came up, you know, they, they obviously want you to reveal who you are. So the audience gets to know you. So that was, um, that was interesting for me. I mean, I didn't, I knew I had to go there with my divorce and you know being single but that really hit a sore spot with me how has that experience then influenced how you parent oh a lot I mean I think that's why it's so important that my kids have their dads in their lives you know first with my older son Oliver and my twins I mean there was no equation where they weren't going to have their dad in their life. And that's why, you know, I made such a big effort to, and Mike as well, to, you know, put the kids first, to be able to co-parent because it's not fair to them. You know, I feel like growing up for me, I only knew my mom's side of the story because, you know, back then people weren't so open about talking about things that were uncomfortable. So I only knew my mom's side. So I wish now, looking back, I wish I knew my father's side too. And is there a part of you, because you mentioned that there was this letter that mm -hmm. he wrote to you, 
you never got a chance to read it. It was no. misplaced. Is there yeah. a part of you that wishes you had that chance? Absolutely. I don't have a lot of regrets in my life because I feel like you, you are where you're supposed to be. Um, but that's one thing that I wish had been done differently. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. for sure. For sure. You know, in revealing so much about yourself on this show, that is actually major one of the one of the major contentions of this season, right? That Denise isn't being authentic. What do you make of that? Do you you you've known her outside of this show? Do you think she's being yeah. authentic? You know, I think she is definitely being authentic. I just feel like there's certain things she doesn't want to talk about, you know? So, and like everybody, we have things that we may not want to reveal. And I think this whole brandy thing whether it's true or not we still don't know <laughs> and this is the the suggestion there's like this they had an affair of some right. kind and it, we will see unfold over the rest of the season right? yeah exactly and i think you know really if it did happen uh it could have been like guys that's none of your business it's my business and let's keep it moving i think it could have been handled that way but i think her choosing to leave every now and then sort of made the women feel like there was validity to it Right. Yeah. You've been keeping really busy too because you have a podcast. I you do. Have... Go okay, ahead let's, let's, let's Okay, let's talk about this podcast. Let's yeah. talk about this podcast. Okay. Where, where, where it's called, sorry, it's going to bed with Garcelle. Yeah. It is a fun, sexy, flirty podcast. Where did you come up with this idea? How did you okay, come up so, with this? Okay, <laughs> so I used to do this like once a month. When I didn't have my kids, I'd have a bunch of girlfriends over. And sometimes I would do couples. Sometimes I would do an eclectic group of friends. And we'd sit around, we'd drink, we'd gossip. And eventually sex always came up, right? We would talk about it. And we would just be so candid. And at the, at the end of every time, somebody would say, this is a show. Why aren't you doing this? And I was like, you're right. And then life would happen and other jobs would happen. And so with quarantine, um, it just felt really great. And what we partnered with MGM... And it's sort of like a late night vibe, um, you know, where you put the kids to bed, grab a glass of wine, whatever it is you want to drink, and just hang out with us. And we really go there. We talk about things. I wake up sometimes in the middle of the night going, I can't believe I revealed that. <laughs> like, what am I thinking? <laughs> but it's a lot of fun. And it's what women do, you know? Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. And also coming to America, too. So you all, you all wrapped that, right? That's, that's Yeah, we wrapped we before uh, COVID, thank God. What was it like coming back with that cast, with Eddie, with Wesley, with everybody? Everybody. It was surreal. It really was. If somebody had said to us when we were shooting the original 30 years ago, like 30 years from now, you guys are going to come back and shoot the sequel. We'd be like, uh, what are you smoking? Right? <laughs> but... It's unbelievable. I mean, we were all so giddy to be there because it was it's a, it was a treat. You know, Eddie, um, Arsenio, Sherry Headley. I mean, everybody came back. It was uh, other than Madge Sinclair who passed away. But everybody came back. It was really, really cool. It's really, I can't wait to see it. And visually, it's going to be stunning. So I hope we are in theaters when it comes out. We can go to theaters. Yeah, how is, how is it being in quarantine right now for you? I, I'm sick of it. <laughs> I'm so sick of it. Tell us how you really feel. Yeah. Tell us how you really feel. You know, feel. I will. Um, yeah. It's enough already, but I get it. I get it. We have to be safe. We have to do the mask. I get that 1,000%. I need my kids to go back to school. I want to go get a massage. <laughs> yeah, how's home, a how's homeschooling been? How's homeschooling been? Um, luckily, they're at an age where they can do it themselves. I just have to make sure that they do it because they, they have laptops. So I just yes. have to make sure that everything is sent in because they'll mm -hmm. say they'll do it. And it'll be like, why is there four things missing? So that's really, thank God, I don't have little babies that I have to stay on top. But other than that, it's keeping them from video games. I'm so sick of them screaming at their friends, you know, because mm -hmm. they're playing these games. It's enough. Um, we see you being a mom on the show, uh, and in the past few weeks, this topic of what black parents have to tell their children, especially black moms and their sons, about interactions with the police. Have you had those conversations with your sons? How have oh, they gone? What do you tell absolutely. them? Absolutely. We've had these conversations for years. You know, it's... I know a lot of people are sort of awake and aware now, this awakening of what we've been going through. But I call it the know, Great Awakening. 
Oh, there you go, the great yeah. awakening. I like that. I have to borrow <laughs> that. Um, and we've always had those conversations because that's always been our reality. You know, when you have black kids, when you have, um, whether it's your nephews, your sister's husband, or us. You know, a few months ago, I got pulled over by the cops because I made a, a, a right turn that I've been doing this for years, by the way, at this stop. I had no idea you couldn't do it. And I got pulled over and my son Jax was in the back seat. And I was so grateful that he was in the back seat because he got to see my interaction. He got to see that, you know, my hands were at the wheel. He, he actually heard me say, I'm reaching for my wallet. You know, all those things that you, we have to do because we don't want anyone to mistake you know, that I'm reaching for something, you know? And it's those things that we have to live with all the time. You know, I, my older son, Oliver, is, has tattoos all over. And, you know, people judge him just by the way he looks. And it's, that's our reality. And it's hard. It's really a hard, it's sad. This is a, I'm hopeful because people are now aware. But it's also sad that it's taking this long for people to see what we've been talking about it and protesting about it and screaming about it and crying about it. it's just you know it's not right it's not right describe that level of i mean were you feeling anxiety when you were pulled over like you know yeah, describe absolutely. that describe that level of anxiety and just just yeah, I mean, to stay the calm. minute I mean, you know uh, you hear the sirens or you know you you sort of, you know, tense up because even if you're not doing anything wrong, you just do because you're conditioned to, right? And um, I know because we've had these conversations, you know, being pulled over, make sure, you know, your hands are, you know, 10 and two on the wheel, you know, so that they see your hands right away. And, you know, you're obviously very respectful and, you know, answer back and do all that. But, you know, the fact that I have to say I'm reaching for my wallet now, which, if I was with a girlfriend of mine, a white girlfriend, and she was driving, she wouldn't think to do that. You know, she wouldn't think to do that. So it's things like that that, you know, you have to, um, we ha we're always aware of, but it's nice to see that people are now seeing it. And I, I really feel like people are like, I'm going to get a book on like, racism. And I'm like, that's great. You can do that. But it's all about being treated equally. I want to be promoted the same way. I want to be compensated the same way. I feel like with my resume in Hollywood, I've been in Hollywood over 20 something years, which is a feat in itself to continue working. And I'm so grateful. But I do feel that so many times my white counterparts get paid a thousand percent more than I do. I know it for sure. And that's really, it really sucks. And it really, um, we're not valued as, as we should be. And I are think you... people are, go ahead. Oh, no, 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 go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. No, I just feel like it's been happening for a long time. And now I'm, I'm not putting up with it. If you don't see my value, you don't get to have me in your project. Simple as that. I think that's a great, great value to have. Are you at least making more than Sutton? <laughs> that's awesome. I don't know. But Sutton doesn't need the money. That's the, that's the thing. <laughs> right? Didn't believe right? the winner goes, I think there's two baseball teams that she owns. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know any baseball teams. <laughs> oh, good to know. Well, yeah. I, are, you, do you, are you having these conversations then openly with your castmates? With your non-black um, castmates? That's actually, it's interesting. We haven't had those conversations because everything happened after we we were done with the season mm. but part of my angst was that I felt like no one really got to know me that way like you know how is it being a black woman in Hollywood you know how is it um being you know just trying to figure out what my my story is and that's where I was coming from when I felt like you know I say things and it just goes over your head like nobody really not that they didn't see color because I hate when people see that because you have to see color unless you're colorblind but um, I think um, if you want to get to know someone, you got to get to know who they are and what their journey is. And maybe it wasn't enough time. And I know the women were saying, oh, you weren't around a lot. And which is true. I was juggling other projects while doing Housewives. But at the same time, you know, we could be a little, we can go a little deeper. I would love to see those conversations too. And, and especially. That would be nice. It would yeah, be refreshing. I think, it, I think it would be super interesting. Yeah. Um, 
you know, for the rest of the season, what there's just so much packed into the season already. But what what do you think we can expect? Rome obviously sounds like a party. Rome was definitely a party, and then also very dramatic, very dramatic. I mean, um, it was hard to watch at times, and I was in it. You know what I mean? But um, I think the reunion will be interesting, as they all are, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. It, it's good. You're in, but you're all going to do it virtually. So it'll be very interesting. I'm so sad. Be... My first one. <laughs> Listen, I had an outfit to kill. <laughs> Are you, you can still you can still wear it. You'll have to just stand up and do it. Same thing from the waist oh, up. yeah. This is this is true. Yeah. You know, I think it's so interesting. You 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 bring up that you you've been in this business for more than a minute now. When at what point did you feel like you could step into? that power to ask for what you deserve or, or is this a more recent I'm still trying to find it <laughs> I'm still trying to find it because for so many times you're afraid to speak up because if you speak up then someone else is going to get the job or you're not going to get it or you know um I think just now we're all feeling our power I remember I just saw Viola Davis do this interview where she was saying that you know people are comparing me to Meryl Streep people are comparing me to these amazing actresses and why am I not compensated for like they are. So I think we are now stepping into our power in terms of being able to say that and feel, we've always felt that it was justified, but now I feel like we're, we, our voices are, are being heard, I hope. Mm -hmm. Your voices are being heard. And I think the stories are finally going to get told too. Yeah, I think so. I think yeah. so. I think, you know, George Floyd um, woke everybody up. And I think if it was, if it didn't happen during COVID and quarantine, I think it would have been another guy, another story, another. I think the fact that everybody was staying still and being in their homes and not being distracted by their normal lives, that that made it even that much more powerful. And it took something like that to get the world to say, whoa, did we just see a guy get murdered? You know, I mean, like, I think that would what, what, you know, that's what it took. And we couldn't you know? look, we couldn't and look all, away. I mean, all mm -hmm. of it, even like Amy Cooper. Now there's an Amy Cooper law, you know? I mean, I think all these things are happening. I believe in the universe. I believe in timing. I'm very spiritual. And I think those things had to happen now for us to pay attention. And we can't look away. Well, I look forward to seeing that extra comma in your next contract. Girl, me too! <laughs> Before I let you go, because you did such an excellent Kyle impression, and I know you said you can't do it for all the castmates, but can you do Dorit? Because, oh, my God. And I, she because, says, um, you know, she decorated the Buca de Peppo, and I said, oh, my God, this looks like Capri. And she said, Capri? And I was like, oh, is it Capri or Capri? Capri. I don't know. Tomato, tomato. That's Dorit. <laughs> Have you been to her, the Buca de Peppo? Oh, yes, 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 yes. That's where we had Teddy's baby shower. Oh, mm -hmm. all right. So all you'll right. see it too. What's your What's your go to order there? Oh, I like the meatballs, spaghetti and meatballs. Can't go wrong. You know, it's family. It's easy, right? What do you? It's easy. <laughs> Garcelle, this was so lovely. Thanks for coming Thank on the after show. Thanks for keeping it real on the show and on here. Uh, we cannot wait to see more. Thank you so much and have a great day and be safe. You too. Thanks okay. so much, Garcelle. Have a good one.